Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl were the Gen 4 remakes that we all wanted. They were the most anticipated games in the entire Pokemon series. However, they are some of the worst Pokemon games that the fans have ever seen. Out of all of the main series Pokemon games ranked on the audience rating summaries on Google, which is far from a credible source, but we'll get to that later, BDSP reaches the lowest of lows in 3.2 out of 5 stars. This is even sadder when you consider Pokemon Sword and Shield being the lowest rated Pokemon games until BDSP came along. Even more depressing is the common trend of Pokemon remakes doing better than their original games. Ultra Sun and Moon did better than Sun and Moon. Heart Gold Soul Silver did better than Gold Silver Crystal. Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire did better than Ruby and Sapphire tying with Emerald. Then we get to Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl performing worse than Diamond and Pearl. Let's go in depth as to why. I'm going to be covering many topics on what separates BDSP and the other Pokemon games from each other. Oh, also, this is obviously a very, and I mean extremely, subjective approach. Let's get into it. The design of Pokemon games as of recently has been on a notable decline. It's been a hit or miss for modern Pokemon fans. Not many people like the chibi style of the 3DS and Switch games. X and Y is a little bit of a notable exception though, since it introduced the overworld chibi models to us, but even then not many people really liked it. Maybe I liked X and Y's chibi designs as a kid though. I have no idea. We were doing a good job with getting away from the chibi style in Sun and Moon with the cost of subpar animation, and this continued in Sword and Shield. But we went back to Chibi and BDSP, and out of all of the Chibi babies that Pokemon gave birth to, this was by far the ugliest one. Even the actual character models look really strange to me. For example, Gym Leader Rourke looks cross-eyed in this picture, and Mars just looks weird. Additionally, scaling is meh in this game, just like a, a lot of the other Switch games. Why is the scaling in Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee actually good? Mega Gyarados? Just Gyarados itself? And Onyx? Actually scaled properly. But in every other game, the scaling is just mediocre at best. Groudon is small. Lastly, I personally don't like the story of DPP in general, but that might just be me. Oh, also, just a disclaimer, this game is definitely not a copy and paste from Diamond and Pearl, and I'll get into why in the miscellaneous section later. This is probably the most talked about topic in regards to BDSP. BDSP is infamous for the sheer amount of glitches that it hosts. As such, ILCA, the developers for BDSP, released a notable amount of patches for the game. The earliest of which being released on day one. And we are definitely going to get back on these for later. Some issues have also been fixed for more pleasant gameplay. What, like some trainers getting stuck in the fence when they're trying to battle you? I feel like that spinner is not on the correct path. Is that a bug? I feel like he should be looking out on top of the bottom of that, no? Does he always move like this? I'm pretty sure the spinner's broken, right? I didn't even know that was possible. How can a spinner's movement be bugged? <laughs> this game is so broken, man. The underground crashing every so often, or how you can completely skip the Team Galactic Mount Coronet storyline by hatching an egg in front of this NPC. I am in the fourth year. Oh! I got it. Who cares? Who cares? Did it work? Oh, I got it! I did it! Screw you! I'm going to Sunny Shore! Or can we talk about how you can literally cheese the Snowpoint Gym's puzzle by simply moving diagonally just to fight Candace? Funny side note, did you know that you can accidentally softlock yourself in the Snowpoint Gym, 
meaning that if you, for whatever reason, decided to save in this spot, you're stuck there. You're not getting out. You have to restart the game and play up to that point again, all while telling yourself to never ever softlock there again. And that's just one of the softlocks. There are many more that I don't feel like getting into. Oh, you want me to? Fine, here's some more. In Veilstone City, you can lock behind these two NPCs. Not a softlock, but if you don't have fly, it's game over. Yeah, my Pokemon are like mid middle, mid to hey, five. Vince. Vince. Yeah. Help. Look. Did you soft lock yourself? In Sunny Shore City, you can lock yourself in between these NPCs inside of a house. There are some other locks that you can encounter, but I think you get the idea. Literally a week after the first patch, BDSP's 1.1.0 update data was simply optimized. This implies that the games were unpolished even after the first patch update, which claims that they fixed bugs. Again, released on day one. Some bugs and glitches are obviously fixed though, such as the infamous duplication glitch in 1.1.2, and the fact that you could open your menu while still walking? You could even surf to Shaman early and get a mythical Pokemon in addition to the Mew and Jirachi that you receive in the early game? Obviously, no Pokemon game is perfect. And the earlier Pokemon games are a prime example of huge glitches. But I swear, I have never ever seen so many glitches that you could accidentally trigger in a modern Pokemon game. Overall, BDSP is likely the Pokemon game that has had the least amount of polishing out of any modern Pokemon game. Arguably one of the most important parts of the Pokemon games is the in-battle mechanics. And you know what? The changes in these games are actually pretty good. These games are up to date with Sword and Shield's mechanics. So let's say, for example, in Ultra Sun and Moon doubles, when a Pokemon summons Rain with a Swift Swim Pokemon on the field, the game applies the change in battle order on the next turn, so the Swift Swimmer will still be slower than the other Pokemon until the next turn. In Sword and Shield, the battle order change is applied immediately, so when Rain is summoned, the Swift Swimmer will be faster on the same turn. Also, Fairy types are in Sinnoh. Overall, I think positive changes. Some Pokemon also got buffed in transition from the previous generation to Sword and Shield, and this applies to BDSP. Gengar received Nasty Plot, Alakazam received Nasty Plot, Blastoise has Shell Smash now, Infernape has Power Up Punch, and Rotom received Nasty Plot. However, some Pokemon have also been nerfed, with a few of these nerfs being really brutal. Tyranitar lost Pursuit, Zapdos lost Hidden Power, Weavile lost Knockoff as well as Triple Axle, and Scizor lost Bug Bite and Super Power. Some of the out of battle mechanics are really weird though. The Shiny Charm for instance was heavily nerfed to only apply its improved odds for only the Masuda method, which is a shiny hunting method that involves hatching eggs with parents of different countries. Also, Fog. The Fog is still in the game. Everyone hates this weather. Fun fact, did you know that there exists code that Fog was originally going to be included in black and white as well? <laughs> Another reason why Gen 5 is the best generation of all time. Overall, the mechanics plus the buffs and nerfs to specific Pokemon were a mixed bag. But I think they held up pretty good. The online system, however, is a completely different story. One of the most common complaints from people is that BDSP felt incomplete. And you know what? That's exactly right. It is very much incomplete. ILCA addressed this by fixing it a little in patch updates, but even so, it still doesn't fix the fact that this means that they knew online was not complete. In 1.1.0, see I told you these would be important, the patch allowed you to get mystery gifts and unlocked online features for the underground and contests. In 1.2.0, 
The union rooms allowed you to connect with 8 players at a time, introduced the Coliseum feature, and allowed for people to view global and group records in Jubilife TV. Sure, one could say that this point is brief, but you need to remember that one of Pokemon's biggest selling points is the multiplayer aspect. So this, even though it's brief, is still a major blow. Some other points that I will briefly touch upon. With lack of a better term as of writing this script, one thing that the modern Pokemon games have had is something I'd like to call gimmicks. For reference, Gen 6's gimmick was the introduction of Mega Evolution. Gen 7's gimmick was Z-Crystals while still retaining Mega Evolution. Gen 8, specifically Sword and Shield, introduced Dynamax and Gigantamax at the cost of removing Mega Evolution and Z-Crystals. Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, however, does not have a single gimmick whatsoever. Now, this is definitely a subjective point, and some people say that no gimmick may be better than some gimmick, but I personally like the gimmicks of some of the recent generations. I mean, everyone was fearing the thought of Cynthia with a Mega Garchomp. That sounded absolutely exciting and intimidating. And honestly, it still is. It seems like an absolute gut punch when Cynthia had the option of using a Mega Garchomp in the Battle Tree in Sun, Moon, Ultra Sun, and Ultra Moon. And yet, here in BDSP, she uses regular old Garchomp. Now, to be fair, this game Cynthia is probably the scariest to battle out of any game, but it still doesn't fix the problem of having no gimmick. Now, some even briefer points. The post game is extremely lackluster, the fight zone is boring, with the only thing you can really do is challenge the battle tower. Contests were completely gutted and not really fun to watch for me, as if they were at all completely subjective. Catching legendary Pokemon is meh, with a majority of them being in Romana's Park, added in patch 1.1.0 by the way, so you couldn't even get these legends in the base game. Sure, you can get Regirock, Regice, and Registeel to get Regigigas, and you can find the other Sinnoh legendary Pokemon in their own events, but why weren't the other legendary Pokemon like this? At least in Platinum, Professor Oak tells you that the legendary Kanto birds are running amok around the region. Speaking of catching legendary Pokemon, Mesprit and Cresselia being roaming Pokemon is not fun to mess with, and I hate roaming Pokemon. They're not fun to catch. The health bar speed increase is huge. Definitely one of my biggest scripts with the original Gen 4 games. Gone and out. It is a fantastic change, allowed for the game to keep the pace going. Having said that, there are some quality of life features and overall positive changes that I did not mention yet. Remember when people say that BDSP is just a copy-paste from Diamond Pearl? Well, DPP didn't have Affection, Experience All, and Shadow Garatina. Affection is a weird change though. While it is fun to abuse for casual players, experienced players do not find it as fun. Some people despised it so much that they would rather make their Pokemon hate them by forcibly feeding it bitter medicine after taking damage in the hail. The experience share being shared to all Pokemon is a controversial feature that no one can agree on, and in my opinion, it is a fantastic change, because it reduces the amount of grinding that you have to do. And that's considering the fact that you can't turn it off. The Shadow Giratina fight is extremely cool, definitely one of the more unique fights in the series. The Gym, Elite Four, and Champion rematches are extremely fun to play and watch. They all have 6 Pokemon, and are much harder to beat. Hell, it even gives me flashbacks of Renegade Platinum. Like, the, what, the devs just contacted Drayano and asked him how to make a battle entertaining and difficult as best as I can. And that game is fun as hell. Having the option to turn off sound effects and the music is really cool as well, since it allows you to play your own music while listening to the game's sound effects. Speaking of music... The last point in the video. While I do like the music being generally improved, it still doesn't translate too well in Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. To be fair, I love music and I listen for any details in any music piece. Music in Pokemon is therefore, overall, fantastic. But BDSP just 
doesn't work with some of these pieces. The Cyrus battle theme is one of the most improved battle themes, but it still is very underwhelming. Like, if I could listen to any Cyrus battle theme, it's the Ultra Sun and Moon theme, hands down. The Elite Four theme is literally copy and pasted from the Gym Leader theme, put down a pitch or two, so it is still underwhelming as fuck. The Lake Guardian theme got heavily nerfed. It's not as listenable to me. I just listened to the original Lake Guardian theme instead. And Dialga and Palkia's theme, while improved overall, still does not feel like a battle theme to me. But some of the sound effects in the background are a nice touch. With that said, however, there are still some good music pieces in this game. The Cynthia theme is still fantastic as always. The Shadow Giratina theme, while worse than Platinum's regular Giratina theme, is still fantastic to listen to. The Gen 4 Legendary theme, aka the Regigigas, Cresselia, Giratina, and Heatran theme, is majorly improved from being one of the most underwhelming legendary battle themes to now one that is actually listenable. And the Gym Leader theme sounds far more superior than in Diamond, Pearl, Platinum. Did I say superior? As in the Pokemon? This isn't even about Gen 5. You could deny my claim of BDSP being bad games, but the fan reception can tell you otherwise. Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl are the worst rated Pokemon games for a reason, and I believe I found some of the big reasons as to why they are hated so much. I personally don't really like these games, and I haven't even played them. I just watched other people play it instead. The fact that so many people complained about these games gave me enough of a reason to write a script to this effect. I was personally optimistic about these games, and the result that we got it's just so disappointing. Like, you could just be playing Platinum. Or you can check out my Renegade Platinum Hardcore Nuzlocke series that I did a while ago. Renegade Platinum is by Drayano, and I highly recommend his ROM hacks. And in the meantime, why not subscribe and like this video? It tells me that you like these videos that I make. You can also press the dislike button to get me up in the algorithm and tell me how butthurt you are about how I vomited on BDSP in the comments. I look forward to reading absolutely none of them, but I do know that it still helps me get in the algorithm, so thank you in advance. Anyways, I'm probably gonna go and pick up a Gen 5 game and play it to my heart's content and never look back at BDSP whatsoever. You also need to remember that any scripted video of mine will always have a bad outro.